video, um, I will be going over uh, how to do a physics-based reconstruction with LTT. Um, and I'm going to use the same data set that I used on a previous one. But in this one, I'm going to specify um, the spectra and the material. And then you'll see how some of the algorithms are then employed to correct for things like beam hardening and scatter and detector blur. Um, so just as before, I'm going to start on load SCT. And one thing that I didn't um, remember to state in a previous video is um, load SCT not only loads the metadata from an SCT file, but it can also read um, the North Star metadata format, which is NSIPRO, and it also will read the metadata format for um, Nikon data sets. So anyway, we'll load the SCT. I'm going to go to this truss data set, and here's the SCT. So this is down sampled from the original version just um, so you can see everything happen in a reasonable amount of time. So the data set loaded. We go to the next page and then now we're going to need to click on the spectra in physics button to make sure the entire spectra um, has been modeled. So here the SCT did populate some fields. It populated KV, so it's a 200 KV. It also, um, I actually put these in before so I didn't have to find them. Um, we have a detector response function in here. It's given by a file name and also for the det detector blur. Um, so the formats of these are listed in the manual and these are we did these with um, Monte Carlo simulations, but there's other ways to, to do these. You, you could do them empirically, like with stopping power. And in addition to that, in a lot of systems that are um, that you're going to have to do, you're going to have to do a spectral calibration, and I'll cover that in a different video. Anyway, looks like we have the source spectrum modeled, the detector modeled, and then for the filters, it looks like we have a quarter millimeter of copper. Okay, the last thing that we need to specify, which is not in the SCT, is um, the materials that we expect to see. Now, this material is just one material, and it's TIE64. So I can, and it's this is actually in the material library, so I type TIE64. I type add material, and now LTT knows that the, that the material is titanium. Now it's going to use this for a few things. It'll use it for uh, the scatter correction, which is not totally critical that you get the material exactly right. You can be a little off and it'll still do good. But it also um, is needed for the, the beam hardening correction. And the beam hardening correction is a multi-material beam hardening correction if you need it. Um, and there you would list the multiple materials. Anyway, so we have that specified. If we can close this, go to the next page. Now I'm going to say new processing sequence. We'll do in RAM. Now, since we've specified all the spec, the spec we specified the spectra and the material. If we click default, it's going to automatically populate these fields with the physics-based chain. So you see some new ones here. We have detector deblur, and it went ahead and put that one in the chain because we specified a detector blur file. It also put in a physics-based scatter correction because you gave it the spectra and the material to see. And it also put in the iterative beam hardening correction. Now we're going to make a few modifications here. First, for this one, um, so the physics-based correction, it's not a terribly fast or a terribly slow algorithm, um, but this is running on a laptop. So there is a little trick to make this go faster. So this particular scan it had a really big magnification factor so I'll show you so here's the source and here's the object and there's the detector so it has a really big magnification factor so the, st the scatter signal is very low frequency and in addition to that it's actually the same for all rotations so to make this go faster we can just click rotationally invariant okay <clears throat> and that'll make it go faster so anyway that's pretty much the only change that we have to do um, we have to do for this. Um, oh, and, and by the way, this algorithm, if you, if, you know, you weren't running on a laptop like I am here, um, it would run um, quite swiftly. Um, it, it's, it's just that the laptop is not that powerful. Anyway, so let's go back to the beginning, make a 10 rads, and we'll do before. We'll stack all the projections to find a blank space in the projection, which I've identified. We'll populate the fields. Now let's just go to the end and run them all. <clears throat> so this may take a little bit of time as it goes through. Um, so what can I say while we're waiting? Oh, so maybe the, the physics-based correction. So the physics-based scatter correction. So the way it works is it takes your 
radiograph it, it down samples it <clears throat> um, because the scatter signal is usually a low frequency um, signal and then it estimates uh, first order scatter from that and then for the second order scatter it kicks off like a really uh, dumbed down Monte Carlo simulation to do the multiple scatters um, and that one assumes it sort of simplifies the geometry a little bit more and and, and the higher order scatter assumes that it's one single value that you're trying to estimate. Um, so it's, it's flat for higher order scatter. Anyway, I guess that wasn't so long. So it's done now. We'll go to this page. This was the volume, reconstruction volume. And we can go ahead and finish the reconstruction. And what you're going to see here, if you compare this reconstruction to the last video, is um, you're not going to see um, some of the artifacts you saw before, which were um, the apparent voids at the at the joint of every node. You'll see uh, no more of the black streaks, um, and everything will be a more uniform color because it is a uniform. It is an object printed from one material, and the density isn't that variable. Okay. Anyway, it's done now. So let's go to a slice. We're going right through there, and if we. We see the artifacts are much more reduced. Let's zoom in. So you can see the artifacts, that the, there were the black spots at the nodes, those are gone now. There are a few uh, artifacts in here still, these here, and these are basically coming from the, the corrections here that were applied were so strong that um, it, it did introduce a little bit of sort of ringiness, and one may want to sort of back off on a correction or smooth it a little bit. But anyway, that's pretty much all there is. The hardest part about this is just to get the uh, the spectra calibrated properly. That That's the most key thing. And in a future video, I will discuss that. That's the end of the video. Thank you.